This video lesson is for cycle three, week one, ages 10 to 12. And we will be practicing drawing some North American animals. What you can see is that we will start with the oils kind of recap. Some of your students might be new this year, but since you have the older students, I'm guessing a lot of them have probably been in CC for a few years and have heard of the oils concepts. So if you don't really need to review this, you can skip it, but if you have some new students, um, go through and talk about what the O, I, L, and S stand for. The only one I'm going to talk about today is the O for circles because that's going to be the foundation of our drawing lesson is taking a complicated subject matter, breaking it down into circles, and then drawing the proportions first before we add the details. So a circle is an enclosed shape that begins and ends in the same place. So you can see that this is completely closed rather than a line which starts and ends at a different place. So in our circle family where the students can practice drawing circles, we can have lots of different enclosed shapes that all count as circles for this purpose. And even something like this would count as a circle. So that's one thing you do wanna show students that all of these things would fit into this first category there. After you define and talk about the oils words, then you will start with um, an image of the animal. So if you have students um, who are either younger or you just wanna go step by step and have everyone do the same thing, then you could pick out this image off of the website. The link is on the blog. And every student and yourself would get this image to work from and you guys would all do it together step by step. If you felt like your students were more capable of doing similar steps but with different images, you could have several of these available and have students choose whether they want to do the antelope or the elk and just have some options as definitely the older kids especially like to have a little bit more control over what they're doing or they like to be able to have more choice and we can actually give that to them at this age. So whether each student has the same image or whether it's this one as well mixed in, it's gonna be the same exact concepts and they're actually really similar in structure. So the students should be able to understand how while you're teaching about this one, the same concepts apply to this one as well. Every student will have the image they will also have a marker, they will have a piece of drawing paper and a pencil. And you'll be showing them step by step on the board what to do and they will be doing it also on their own paper. Up on your whiteboard you will have the image taped and we're going to be talking about how to look at a complicated image and break it down into overlapping circle shapes and then drawing those in the right size, placement and proportion on their paper. So ask students if they can find circle shapes in this image. And hopefully they don't talk about these little dots here because yes, those are circles, but that's not really the overall shapes that make up the components of this antelope. So hopefully they say things like the head, the ears, the body, the tail. We can kind of go through and start finding these large shapes that we can talk about and pull out. The first one that we will start with is the body shape. It's the central shape that we see here. We will take our marker and the students will do the same thing on their paper and they will outline the general, general shape of that main circle. And you can see that I began and I ended in the same place, creating that circle there. On your whiteboard, you will have a space where you'll be drawing. I always outline it with a black rectangle just so the students can also see the placement on the page that I'm doing. We wanna now begin to identify and describe this shape that we found and then draw it here in the right proportion. So we can see that it's almost kind of rectangular. It's much longer than it is tall. And we can even start to analyze that this is how wide it is, and this is how tall it is. So it's basically twice as wide as its height. So let's go ahead and begin to mark off. This is how wide it is. So where would the height be? 
it would be about half of that. Does that basically look like the same proportions? Yeah, it's pretty good. So now we can go ahead with our light, light, sketchy lines and draw in that shape. If I draw really heavy handed like that, it's harder to get smooth curves and it's harder to erase later when we don't need all these lines in the final product. So light, sketchy lines are really important. Now ask the students, what's the next circle shape that they can find hidden in our picture? Probably the answer will be the head. So I will find the basic circle shape of that head. We will all outline it with our marker. And now we have to identify and describe not only the shape, the size, but also where it goes in relation to the shape that we already have. So maybe they would describe this kind of as an egg shape or um, maybe just an oval. And then we have to ask them, well, where does it go on this paper? And we can see that it slightly overlaps right here in the previous shape that we did. So I'm gonna put my little mark here because I can see that that's where the bottom is and it comes down into that. How tall is it? We could again measure. We could say the height of this is not quite the same as the height of the body, but it's fairly close. So I'll use that measurement. I wanna say that's about how high that is. So again, I'm comparing one thing to another thing. And so I'm always comparing one piece to another to get the right proportions. Now I can go through with my sketchy lines and do my kind of ovally shape for the head here. Mine does not go past that. So I'm gonna make sure that mine does not go past that on this side either. So another thing to see where things begin and end. And then they would simply go through. It depends on, again, the skill level and understanding of your students. You might say, okay, you understand the concept, now continue on on your own, and you could walk around and help them. Or if they're not really getting it and they need more help, you could continue to go through and say, okay, let's find the next circular shape and then walk them through drawing it on their paper. Um, again, totally up to you and you know, kind of how many parents you have there to help. There's probably a lot of factors on if you want to let them go at their own pace or if you want to walk them through. But they would simply continue on finding all of these overlapping circle shapes. The reason that we don't just start drawing from one side to the other is that things typically, typically get out of proportion if we start little bit by little bit. Maybe the tail would be the right size, but then the body gets big and the head's too small. If we go ahead and we sketch all the shapes in the right sizes in relation to each other, we know that before we do any details, before we do anything like eyes and fur and all of that stuff, we know that we have the right shapes in the right places. And that way we don't have to erase a ton if we mess up as we go through. So it kind of just gives us this blueprint that we know is in the right place. And then we can build off of that with all of the other little details. Once you have all the shapes that go there and we would have all of the legs and all the things that we need, then we begin to erase some of the things that we don't need. That's especially why we need those light sketchy lines. And we can also begin to connect some of these shapes into a more realistic outline. So we can study how these things get connected and say, oh, okay, this is actually more of like a, a low curve like that. Over here, I can see that it actually comes in like that. So after the basic shapes are done, we're gonna go and modify and add all the nuances of line in our outlines as we go through. And then after all of these extra things are added, then we can start doing details like you know, the fur or the eyes and things like that. So that's the building blocks of drawing something, especially something complicated, is to start with major shapes, then do the outlines a little bit more um, accurately, and then build up the details on top of that. And that's the basic learning target of what your students should come away with after this lesson. For fast finishers, you can have colored pencils available and they can add a background or color in that 
for students who maybe don't get all the way finished or only even halfway if they're more methodical, then they have this paper to take home with them and they can go ahead and finish this at home and they don't have to worry about um, cramming all the drawing into that short half an hour time frame.